That is a very, very good question. Train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. A very translation might be, he will not forever depart from it. The level of backsliding among the children of believers is very high. The level of backsliding among the children of preachers is very high because Satan targets the families of believers, but he targets the families especially of leaders and of preachers, pastors, missionaries, those in ministry, and so forth. He will not forever depart from it. It is, however, well phrased as you put the question across. Is it a principle or is it a prophecy, a guarantee? It is more of a principle because when we look at it in light of such passages as the Olivet Discourse, parents will turn against children, children against parents. We see that that's commutative. Children will turn against parents in the last days for the sake of Jesus. We see that it is not necessarily an absolute guarantee. It is a principle, and it will be, however, the norm. It is not uncommon to have children who will go through a period of backsliding, sometimes into adult life. They usually return to the Lord. If they were brought up in the truth, they usually come back to Jesus. The question is, how much unnecessary damage and how much havoc do they wreck in their own life in the process before they come back? That's usually the question. If you have a child who has fallen away and has even gone into adult life, do not cease praying for them. Do not accept them as being believers. Do not accept them as being something they aren't. Do not live under a delusion, but do not cease praying for them. Do not condone their immoral living if they're living immorally. Do not do anything to condone it. At the same time, don't give up. Do not give up. Continue to pray. Now, there's something else we have to take into account, and it's not a pleasant thing. The principle of 1 Corinthians chapter <clears throat> 5 is a factor that we need to look at in situations like this. With a backslider, with any backslider, in this case we're talking about a backslidden child, son or daughter. If they do not repent, God may bring about calamity into their life or allow the consequences of their own action to result in a calamity in their life. He'll bring a desperate situation into their life where in fear, in despondency, maybe even in terror, they will return to him in faith and repentance. He will allow them to reap the repercussions of their own actions or even bring some kind of calamity into their life. This is one of the meanings of binding and loosing in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 one of the meanings. Paul did not arbitrarily give this young man over to Satan. You can only bind what is being bound in heaven in the original Greek text. It's present continuous active. We just can't go around arbitrarily of our own volition. We bind this, we lose that. The Holy Spirit was showing Paul, give this person over to Satan. He's serving Satan, he's following Satan, Give him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that his soul will be saved, that he will repent. I tell the true story that happened here in the United Kingdom some years ago. A young girl went away to university, and she had very godly parents, good believers. She was brought up in the truth. She got into the world. She got into drugs, substance abuse. She got into sexual immorality. She went from bad to worse. Her parents were not only grieved and heartbroken, they were almost in disbelief concerning what their daughter had done and her unwillingness to live the way that she knew was right in the fear and grace of the Lord. Well, they prayed and prayed and prayed. And the daughter comes home. Mom, Dad, I have AIDS. Please pray with me. Better that than the alternative. The Lord does not like to save people in order to lose them. It cost God the life of his own son, 
not just to save all of us, but to save each and every one of us. We are so important to him, and our children are so important to him, that Jesus just didn't die for all of us. He died for each of us. If we were the only ones that sinned, if I or you or our children were the only ones who ever sinned, we're not. But even if we were, even if I was, even if you were, God's love is so great that he would have sent his son just to die for you or for me personally. He didn't just die for all of us. He died for each of us. That's how important we are to him. But his holiness is so perfect. He cannot look upon any sin. Ah. He doesn't like to save people to lose them. If a child goes off and will not repent, understand and realize God may have to bring calamity into their life in order to spur them towards repentance. He may not do this by raising his hand against them. He may do it by taking his hand off of them and letting Satan have a go at them, by taking his hand off of them and letting them, allowing them, to reap the repercussions of their own actions, their own immoral or morally decadent lifestyle. Now, it may not be biological death, although in an extreme case it might be. But accept the fact that as you pray for a backslider, and as you pray for a backslidden child, a son or daughter, if they don't repent in the long term into adult life, the Lord may take his hand off of them to a degree and allow the repercussions of their sin to devour them in order to scare them into repentance. They may hit a wall. They may hit a wall, their career, their business, their family, their marriage, their health, all of these things may hit a wall. And in desperation, they'll return to the Lord. Better that than the alternative. Better that than the alternative. So yes, it is a principle, but it is an encompassing principle. On the other hand, we cannot absolutely say that there's an absolute guarantee that backsliders will repent. We cannot say that. What we can say, though, is the good shepherd leaves the 99 for the one. Do not believe in the Calvinistic error of perseverance of the saints. That is not what perseverance of the saints even means in Scripture. Perseverance of the saints comes from the book of Revelation, chapters 13 and 14, the only place it's found, per se, the, the actual phrase, perseverance of the saints, and it's speaking of a prophecy about believers at the dawn of the Antichrist at a specific future time in history. That is the meaning and context. The Calvinists have given it an entirely different meaning alien to Scripture. That's not what perseverance of the saints means. Perseverance of the saints does not mean unconditional, once saved, always saved. It does not mean that. However, the scriptures do teach something else. The perseverance of the Lord. Now, another thing to be careful of is the misinterpretation of John chapter 10. Nobody can snatch them out of the Father's hand. Um, this means that people can't backslide. No, people can backslide. They are misreading the text out of context. In the original Greek, you've got the proboton, the sheep. You've got the thief, the kleptos. <clears throat> and you've got the snatching away, the harpezo. The word there is actually rapture, harpezo. To forcibly snatch away. The harpezo is speaking of the action of the kleptos, the action of the thief. No, Satan cannot make anybody backslide. It is not speaking of the action of the proboton, of the sheep. <laughs> it is not saying that the sheep can't wander away. It's simply saying that Satan cannot snatch them. That's all it's saying. They, again, completely distort the text out of context. But that same chapter, John 10, makes it very clear. Jesus remains the good shepherd. Now, when a lamb wanders off, in the ancient Middle East, and today, Bedouin shepherds will still do it. They will break the bone of a lamb at a particular joint to make it walk with a limp and hug to the knees of the shepherd so it won't wander off and the wolf will not devour it. This is the correction of the Lord in the life of a believer, particularly a young believer. 
the Lord will, if necessary, break the leg of the lamb. It's not pleasant, it is painful, but it is better than the lamb becoming lamb chops on Satan's dinner plate. Again, this is the love of the Lord. The persistence of Christ in his faithfulness. He does not like to save people in order to lose them. The most important thing when you have a child who is backslidden is prayer. The most important thing is persistent, consistent prayer. There's a spiritual battle over their lives. Do not condone what they're doing and pretend that they're still with the Lord and they're still on their way to heaven when they're not. If they're living immorally, do not live in a delusion. On the other hand, keep your door and your heart open to them without condoning or in any way making yourself an accessory to their immoral lifestyle. Don't let them sleep upstairs with their unsaved girlfriend or their unsaved boyfriend and things like that. Okay. Don't allow that. Okay. Um, this is the general broad meaning of the verse. But your question is a very good one and a very well phrased one, and we do thank you for it. It's also very relevant, very pertinent to many believers. Thank you so much. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print in the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.